Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm gonna be covering how to create a fully working Windows 11 virtual machine, or VM. Now for this video, we're gonna be using my installation of Ubuntu, but really the steps can be replicated on any Linux distribution out there, as long as you've got access to the universal kernel virtual machine virtualization software, or KVM. However, before we start the process, we do need to do a couple of things beforehand. First of all, we've downloaded a copy of the latest version of Windows 11 ISO, which you can get directly from Microsoft's site, Simply Google how to download Windows 11 and then scroll down about halfway down where you've got download Windows 11 disk image for x64 devices. From here it's really a matter of choosing the option you want, clicking the button and then really just following the process from here, selecting your language, go for international and here we have the option just to download the ISO. And second we need to have a copy of the Windows 11 Vert.io drivers as they're really required for the VM to function correctly as well as allow you to connect to an internet connection a little bit down the line. You want to make sure that you choose the latest version so in this case it is this option here which is 0.1.240 and the final thing we need to do which is kind of going to vary depending on what motherboard you've got is enable the CPU virtualization. Now if you've got a modern CPU so something that's like maybe even five ten years old Chances are you're going to have this functionality built into it. Uh, for example, on an Intel one, I believe it's called Intel Virtualization Technology or Intel VT. And with AMD CPUs, it's called AMD-V. In either case, once we're happy with all this and we've got everything downloaded, it's time to move on to the next step, which is to install the KVM virtualization software. So to install KVM, you want to open up your Linux distribution software center, which more than likely is going to be one of the following. It's going to be either GNOME Software, KDE Discover, in the case of Ubuntu, it's the App Center. Uh, I believe Linux Mint has their own little App Center as well. So in my particular case, since we're in Ubuntu, we're going to use the App Center. So what we're going to search for is KVM. And in my case, we want to go with the Debian package. And really from here, it's just a matter of install it as you normally would do. Now, one thing to bear in mind, the first time you launch it, it'll probably say something along the lines of, uh, you need to run the service. Easiest way to resolve that is literally just reboot the machine and then on reboot, the service should be running at that point. If it's not, I'd probably double check how it's set up for your particular distribution. Now, alternatively, if you prefer the flat pack option, there is actually a version of the Virtual Machine Manager, which is another name for KVM, available on Flathub. So really, install support for Flathub and then install the flat pack from there. But really, in either case, once you're happy with that, we can move on to the next step. Right then, let's move on to actually spinning up a virtual machine. So let's go to our application launcher and let's choose the option here at the bottom where it says virtual machine manager. Okay, so let's create a new virtual machine. So let's go to the top here where we've got a little picture of an icon. It says create a new virtual machine. And we're gonna pretty much just skip through all this. So local install media, we're gonna use an ISO we downloaded earlier. So let's click forward. And now we're gonna choose the ISO we downloaded. So let's go to browse. Go to the bottom here where it says browse local. Now we'll go to our downloads. And we'll choose the option here, which is the Windows 11 International ISO. Let's go to open. Now in most cases, it will detect automatically the version of Windows you can install, which as you can see here is Windows 11. Okay, let's click forward. Mine up search permissions. Uh, yep, yeah, that's fine. Now here's where you're gonna specify how much space you want to give. The recommendation for a starting point of view would be four cores and eight gig of memory, but again, depends how much you've got. Uh, on my laptop, I've got a six core, 12 thread processor, and I've got 32 gigs of RAM. So, you know what, let's let's give it a little bit more oomph. Let's give it six. And we'll also do a terrible calculation. We'll do six, five, six. We'll give it 16 gig. Okay, let's go to forward. Uh, now we're gonna specify how much space we want for the VM. Windows will typically take up about 30 gig on its own. So let's double that. Let's get, put that to 60. And then we'll click forward. Right, so we're pretty much set up at this point. So let's create, give the name. So we'll just call this Windows 11 VM. VM. And we'll make sure to tick this option here where it says customize the configuration before you install. We'll click finish. Oh, apparently we can't have that in there. Okay, we'll just call it 11 VM then. Okay, there we go. Right, cool. Right, so there's a couple of things we're going to do now. Uh, first of all, we need to make some slight changes to this particular default configuration. The first one we're going to do is click on where it says SATA Disk 1, and we're going to change the disk bus to Vert IO. And we're also going to replace the same step for the NIC or the network interface card. So once again, we are going to choose device model and stick that to Vert IO. 
Now, one of the requirements of using Windows 11 is having what's known as a TPM module. Now, in our case, we're spinning up a virtual machine, so we're not gonna have a physical TPM module, but we can still virtualize it. And the way we do that is go down to the bottom here where it says TPM. You wanna to toggle the option here where it says Advanced Options. And then under the model, you want to change to TIS, and then change the version to 2.0. So basically we're going to virtualize a 2.0 TPM module. So next we need to add a second virtual CD-ROM drive so that we can install the Vertio drivers in order to mount the virtual hard drive and then eventually install Windows 11. So to do that, let's go down to the bottom here where it says add hardware. Make sure you've selected storage at the top, which is the first option. And then under device type, you want to put CD-ROM. Next we want to click on where it says manage. And this looks very similar to what we did earlier. So again, browse local. Downloads, and at this time we're going to choose the vert.io ISO file. So yep, yeah, click on that. We're all good for this bit. So we can click finish. Right, so now we've got two drives. We've got the one that's going to have Windows 11 installation media, and the second one's going to have vert.io. So that's your drives we need for the VM to function correctly. And then the final thing we need to do is change the boot options. So by default it will boot from the disk, but of course there's nothing on the disk, so we're not going to get anywhere. So let's choose the option here to enable boot menu. And we're just going to make sure that our first deboot device is CD-ROM1, which corresponds with our installation media. And then we can begin the installation process. Uh, yep, yeah, let's do that. So we need to, when this appears, we need to press any button, which will start the installation process. Okay, so the VM's now just booting up and we should see our installation media. Okay, here we go. So what we're going to do is this is going to be incredibly redundant, which you can see in a bit. We're going to now choose our language settings. So we'll go to next, next again. And I prefer this option here, the previous version, but you know, it works with either. So uh, we'll go to install Windows 11, go to next. Now in this case, it's a VM, so we don't have a product key. So we can choose the option here, don't have a product key. And it'll pop up and say, we've got a few things ready, which gives me a chance to have a bit of a drink. Okay, so which version you want to stick on there? Uh, let's go with Pro, I like Pro. Again, doesn't really matter. And then we go to Accept. And the first thing you're going to notice in a second is it's going to say, where's my hard drive? As you can see, hardware's not showing. Now we can easily resolve this. We need to load a driver, which is what the Vert.io ISO is used for. So let's go to option here, the driver. Go to Browse, Installation Media, which we're already running, don't need that. But we need the second one here, which is the drivers. So let's go into here. We're going to choose our architecture, which is AMD 64, and then the version of Windows. So in this case, Windows 11. So select like that, click OK. And just like magic, we go, we have our driver. Just click Install. And now it's going to search for disk and look at that, we've now got our drive. OK, so let's press Next. So before we start the process, uh, you ready to install? Uh, yep, yeah, that's fine. Let's crack on with this. So let's go to install and then it's going to start the process of installing Windows 11. Okay, so the installation process is now finished. So it's time to run through the Windows 11 out of box experience. Uh, once again, for some strange reason, we're now going to select our location and keyboard layout. Okay, so the next screen you're going to see is going to ask you to connect to a network. Now, obviously, we don't have an internet connection at this point. However, what we can do is bypass this. The way you do this is you hold down the shift button and F10, which will bring up a command prompt. And from here, you want to type in the following, OOBE slash bypass NRO. Now what this will actually do is bypass the requirement to connect to an internet, and it'll also bypass the requirement to create a Microsoft account. Okay, so we're back on again. So again, right at the beginning, so United Kingdom, and then yes, and then skip unless you want the second one. And as you can see here, we now have the option here saying, I don't have internet. So who's going to use this device? Uh, how about me? Okay, so if you don't set a password, you can actually bypass the option where it asks you to set up free security questions. And we can also put a password later on. Uh, so I'm just quickly just going to whiz through this. Basically, I don't want Microsoft to have any data. I mean, they can have it to be fair, it's a virtual machine, don't bother me. So I'm just going to quickly whiz through all these options here. Okay, so now we're going to see an incredibly condescending loading screen. Then don't worry, we'll get everything ready for you. But you know, don't, just don't worry, little head, it's fine, don't worry. You know, it's Windows, it might take a couple of minutes, it might die at some point, but you know, it's fine, it's Windows. What's right? 
What's that? You don't like AI? Well, you know, we're kind of invested in that, so we can have to push it out to everyone now. Yeah, you're gonna have to deal with it. Anyhow, this shouldn't take too long. Right, okay, so yeah, Windows 11 is now installed. There's a couple of things we need to do in order to get everything up and running. Right, so the first thing we're gonna do is install some drivers, just so we can use the full capability of the VM, including internet, allow us to change the resolution because you tend to be stuck to the default resolution of what KVM uses. So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna install our network driver so we can download some drivers. The way we do that is we right click on the start menu icon, go to the option here where it says device manager. And as you can see, there's usually three of these that don't pop up. You've got the ethernet controller and a couple of PSI devices. So we're gonna pull the driver from the Vertio ISO, which we downloaded earlier. So let's right click on that, go to update driver, browse compute for drivers, and we're gonna literally just point it across to that second mounted drive. So click OK, and then click next. And it will go through, and it, as you can see, it's just found the network driver, which is absolutely fantastic. So it appears Red Hat Vertio Ethernet adapter, and now we have internet. And it also fixes the issue with all of these missing components as well. Okay, brilliant. So as you can see, we just uh, collapse all of this. We're now up and running. We've got all our drivers installed. We've got internet connection. So we've now got a fully functioning Windows 11 VM. However, one thing you'll notice is that you can't change the resolution of the VM yet. So if I right click on here and go to display settings, scroll down here, as you can see, we're stuck here. So we're stuck at the 2080 by 800 resolution. So in order to download a driver that allows us to change the resolution of the VM, we're gonna use what's known as a Spice driver through the aptly named Spice project. So if we go to spice space or spice-space.org, choose the option at the top here where it says download. And about halfway down, you'll find a section where it says about Windows binaries. So what we want to download is this option here where it says Spice Guest Tools. Install it. All right, let's confirm the UAC prompt. And then go to next. And really it's just a matter of just going through and clicking next, next, next. You'll get this pop up here talking to install the display driver. That's fine, we can click install. So we've finally got that installed, so we can now go to finish. Close that down. And now we now go to display settings you can see we can now change the resolution. So let's stick it at my default resolution of my monitor. Uh, as you can see, you can go up to a 2K resolution. Let's go for the full size. So that's 1080p display. So, so at this point, you've now got a fully working Windows 11 VM. So really, have fun playing with it. Do what you need to do with it. Okie dokie, so in conclusion, creating a Windows 11 VM in Linux is dead easy. In fact, this is just the beginning because you can also do what's known as GPU pass-through, hardware pass-through, where you pass through physical hardware to the VM, which makes it incredibly more performance and actually makes it closer to using Windows on real hardware or what's known as bare metal. Now, of course, this video is just an introduction of how to spin up a quick and easy Windows 11 VM, but, you know, I might cover some more advanced topics in the future. We'll just see how it goes. In either case, thanks for watching this video today. And if you did find the video helpful, then please don't forget to leave a like, share the video so more people can see it, and also smash that subscribe button just to see more content like this in the future. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio!